This lesson is going to talk about dynamic systems and forces on an incline. Francine is riding in an elevator which is accelerating upward at 5 meters per second per second. The weight of Francine and the elevator is 9,800 newtons. What is the tension in the rope? To solve this problem, we want to think about the fact that she's accelerating. Since she's accelerating, is she in equilibrium? The answer is no. An equilibrium system is one where there's no acceleration, so this is going to be a different type of problem. This is an example of a dynamic system. A dynamic system is any system that is not in equilibrium. The object will be in motion and accelerating. For a dynamic system, the net force, or the sum of all the forces, equals the mass times the acceleration. This is just like equilibrium systems, except that this is not equal to zero. We can also break it into components. The x components, if you add all the forces in the x direction, and we use sigma, which says the sum of, the sum of all the forces in the x direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. You can also look at the forces in the y direction. The sum of all the forces in the y direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Unlike an equilibrium system, the acceleration is not zero. So now we've talked about static equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium, and we've added dynamic systems. So this chart compares the three. Static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium are similar because they both have an acceleration of zero balanced forces, a net force of zero. The difference is the static equilibrium is at rest or the velocity is zero. The dynamic equilibrium is moving at a constant velocity, so the velocity is not equal to zero. Now we're going to look at a dynamic system. A dynamic system has an object that has a changing velocity. It will be accelerating, so the velocity will not be constant and it will not be zero. Might be zero for one moment, but not for a continuous amount of time. Uh, the acceleration of a dynamic system is also not equal to zero, and the forces are not balanced. The net force is not equal to zero for a dynamic system. So for Francine's problem, first we're going to check, is the object in equilibrium at rest or constant velocity? The answer is no, it's not. So the sum of forces is not equal to zero. Now we're going to identify all the forces and draw a free body diagram. For this system, the forces we're going to look at are the force of tension holding Francine up and the force of gravity of her and the elevator going down at 9,800 newtons. Now you'll notice in this free body diagram, the vectors, the force of gravity and the force of tension, are not equal in length. That's because she has a net acceleration upward, which means she needs to have a greater force in the positive direction. So force of tension, the vector, has to be larger than the force of gravity. Now we're going to set up our force equations for fx and fy. For this problem, there are no forces in the x direction, so we'll just look in the y direction. And we use the sum of forces in the y direction equals may. It's not equal to zero for a dynamic system. It's equal to may. So we're going to add our forces in the y direction. They are force of tension minus the force of gravity. All of that equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. So this is how you set up your problem. You sum your forces on the left and set it equal to may on the right. Now we're going to plug in the values that we know. So we're going to come into a, a little bit of a problem one thing is we know that the force of gravity is 9,800 newtons, but we don't know the mass. So to be able to put a mass into this equation, we're going to use the relationship between the force of gravity and the mass, which is force of gravity is mass times gravity. And we plug in our force of gravity is 9,800 newtons. Our mass times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. And we get that the mass is 1,000 kilograms. So that's going to be used to put into our problem. We're looking for the force of tension. We know the force of gravity. We can plug that in. We just found the mass, so we can plug that in. And the acceleration was given as a positive 5 meters per second squared, so that goes in. And then we're going to solve for force of tension. And we get the force of tension is 14,800 newtons.
Now we're going to shift to another problem, uh, an object on an incline. So Fred has parked his car and it has run out of gas. It's parked at the top of an icy hill. That means there's friction, but it's not a very strong amount of friction. And he decides to let it roll down the hill to the gas station. The car's mass is 1,500 kilograms and the hill is inclined at an angle of uh, 20 degrees. What is the acceleration of his car if the force of friction is 1,400 newtons? So we're going to need to get our forces in a free body diagram for this problem, but I want to talk about how we look at forces on an incline. When we use an inclined plane, we don't use our traditional coordinate system of x and y axes, uh, one being horizontal and one being vertical. We actually take our axis and we shift it so that it's at an angle, so that our x-axis is lined up with the inclined plane. This makes it an easier problem to solve in terms of components. So we put our x-axis along the inclined plane, and our y-axis has to be perpendicular to the inclined plane. The forces that are going to act on his car on an inclined plane, he's going to have the normal force, which is always perpendicular to the inclined plane, so that's along the y-axis. We have gravity, which is always straight down, and we have friction, which will always go against motion, so that will go in the negative x direction. We're going to need to get, we have our friction already in the x direction. We have our normal force in the y direction, but we're going to need to get our gravity in terms of its x and y components. And there's a general equation that we use for gravity on an inclined plane. But I want to point out that the normal force is always going to be perpendicular to the surface, so it's always going to be uh, straight up. If our inclined plane, well, if, our, if it was a flat surface, our normal force would be up perpendicular to the flat surface. If it was another inclined plane, it's always perpendicular. So normal force is not always going to be in the same direction. It depends on the surface that you're sitting on. All right, so now we're going to take our gravitational force. We're going to break it into two components. And the terms that we use for these two components are F parallel and F perpendicular. They are the X and Y components of the gravitational force. F parallel is the component of the force that's parallel to the surface of the inclined plane. That's the X component of the gravitational force. And perpendicular is the component of the force of gravity that's perpendicular to the surface of the inclined plane. It's in the Y direction. Now our, our inclined plane is at an angle of theta. And we're going to use some geometry and trigonometry to derive the equations that we're going to use today. Now you can just learn the equations, but I want to show you how we get to them. So if our angle is, if our angle here is theta, then this triangle right here has a parallel, a matching angle right here, which is the same as this angle right here. And if this angle is theta and this is 90 degrees, then this angle here is 90 minus theta, which means this angle here is 90 minus theta. If that angle is 90 minus theta, then for the gravitational force vector triangle, then this angle must be theta also. So we have this theta, and this is what we're going to use for our problems. Now we're going to do some trigonometry. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so this theta opposite is f parallel, hypotenuse is fg. So sine of theta is f parallel over fg, which gives us that f parallel is fg times sine of theta when we multiply both sides by fg. That gives us the equation, we can replace fg with mg, and this is the general equation that you'll learn. Parallel force of gravity is mg sine theta. For perpendicular force, we're going to use theta again, but now we're going to use cosine theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so cosine of theta is f perpendicular over the hypotenuse, which is fg. Multiply both sides by fg, and we get f perpendicular is fg cosine theta, and remember fg is mg, so we get f perpendicular is mg cosine theta. Those red equations are what you're going to use for all inclined planes for gravitational force. All right, so now we're coming back to Fred's, the Fred problem. First, we're going to see if the object is in equilibrium. Is it at rest or constant velocity? It is not because it's accelerating down the inclined plane. So that means the sum of our forces is going to be ma, not zero. 
Now we're going to identify our forces, draw a free body diagram. Remembering that when we sum the forces, Fg has to be broken into F parallel and F perpendicular. We're going to set up our force equations and solve. So we start with, this is our free body diagram in a little more detail with the parallel and perpendicular forces added. Now we're going to sum our forces in the x direction. And we're really looking at the x direction because we want to know the acceleration of the car. And the car is accelerating along the x axis. So we're going to start with that direction. So our sum of forces in the x direction will include the parallel force that's positive minus the force of friction. So F parallel minus the force of friction equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Now we know that the parallel force is mg sine theta. That's our equation that we derived minus the force of friction, which is actually given to us, equals the mass times the acceleration. And now we're just going to plug in numbers. Our mass is 1,500 kilograms. Gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to take the sine of 20 degrees. Make sure you're in degrees. Minus, we replace the force of friction of 1,400 newtons equals the mass times acceleration. And solve for A, we get 2.4 meters per second squared. In summary, a dynamic system is an object that's in motion and it's accelerating. It has different properties than equilibrium systems. And for gravity on an incline, we have to break it into components. The parallel force is along the surface of the incline. The equation is mg sine theta. The perpendicular force of gravity is perpendicular to the surface of the incline. And its equation is f perpendicular is mg cosine theta.